Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Megan Mead and today I'm going to be talking all about starting solid foods with your baby. I need to preface this by saying I'm obviously not a pediatrician or a nutritionist, so definitely talk with a healthcare professional before you implement any of the things I'm going to talk with you guys about today. This is just purely my experience and I wanted to share it with you guys. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So the very first thing I want to talk with you guys about is signs of readiness. How to know when and if your baby is ready to go ahead and start eating solids. Our pediatrician gave us the go ahead at four months. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends the ages between four to six months to start solids with your baby. I went ahead and gave Olivia cereal at four months, but looking back, I wish I would have waited. And I actually gave her cereal once at four months and then waited until she was six months to feed her again, just because I didn't feel comfortable with it. And if you're a mom, you obviously naturally have that motherly instinct and you'll know if it's the right time to start your baby on solids or not. There are a few signs of readiness you want to look for, and the first one is, do they still have the tongue reflex? I know that you guys know what I'm talking about. I would look really silly if I tried to show y'all what I'm talking about, but it's basically when their tongue just thrusts back and forth. If they still have that, they're probably not ready to eat solids. Also, are they sitting up on their own? If they are sitting up, they are ready to start eating solids. And if they have their pincer grasp, they are ready. Olivia didn't have any of those things at four months, and she really started developing all of them at the same time, right around six months old. My advice to you would just be to pay attention to your baby, watch what they're doing, if they have a tongue thrust, anything like that, they're probably not ready for solids. Just because your pediatrician goes ahead and gives you the go ahead to start solids doesn't mean that your baby is necessarily ready. Now we're going to move into what you need for your baby to start solid foods. You obviously need maybe one plate, two bowls, probably some utensils, some forks and spoons, and bibs, obviously. We also opted to purchase the Bieva Baby Cook, and that was a great purchase for our family. We love it. It's definitely not necessary, but if you want to make your own food, I would highly recommend the Bieva. If you aren't going to make your food, you need to purchase some baby food. Go to the store and look at stage one foods, and that's what you're going to purchase. Okay, moving on to first foods for baby. We decided to completely skip cereals for Olivia. I think we gave her baby oatmeal two times, and after doing a lot of research, Search, I just decided to completely skip them. That is a personal decision. Make that decision for yourself. And if you are going to feed your baby cereals, Earth's Best is a really great brand. They are made out of very high quality organic ingredients and I highly recommend purchasing their baby cereals if that's what you do choose to feed your baby first. We just went straight into fruits and vegetables with Olivia. Some people say not to feed your baby the sweet stuff first because then they won't want the savory stuff later. That was not our experience at all. Olivia loved all foods and we never had a problem mixing in fruits and veggies. Now, you do want to make sure that you feed your baby the same food for three or four days to ensure they're not going to have some sort of allergic reaction to what you're feeding them. So keep that in mind. Some great foods to start with are peas and carrots, sweet potatoes, avocados, I don't know if I said peas or not, bananas, apples, and pears. All of those are great things to start first with your baby. And keep in mind that food before one is just for fun. At this point, you're just trying to introduce them to textures and different tastes and flavors and all of that good stuff. Their main source of nutrition at this time is still milk. And speaking of that, I only fed Olivia one time a day in the beginning. We slowly worked up to more, and I honestly put a lot of pressure on myself when it came to that. I felt really guilty that maybe I wasn't feeding her enough food, but just pay attention to your baby and work at their pace. I noticed that Olivia wasn't super interested in eating at six months. She liked it, but she, I could tell that she just didn't want to eat real food all the time. She preferred to nurse, so I just followed her lead, and at 12 months, she was officially eating three meals a day. Now let's discuss purees versus baby led weaning. So baby led weaning was a no-go for us. I gave Olivia some apple slices. They were steamed and she got choked really bad on the apple. We actually had to dig it out of her throat and it was a very traumatizing experience. So after that, we decided no more baby led weaning for us. We just did purely purees for the first six to 10 months of age probably. And then about maybe, I would say probably around 10 months, I gave her black beans and let her experiment with those. And then I started slowly introducing more things. And that worked out perfectly for us. Now, obviously she doesn't eat purees at all. It was just a very slow transition. She does like the pouches still, which is a puree, but most of the time she just eats what we're eating at this point. 
And that's just what we did. We did purees and slowly worked our way up and that worked out great for us. I know some people love baby led weaning and swear by it, but I'm a very nervous person in general. And after that whole Apple experience, I was just seriously traumatized and I do not plan on doing baby led weaning with my next baby either. Let me know in the comments what your experience with baby led weaning was. Maybe some of you guys have had a better experience than me and can teach the moms watching this more about it down below in the comments. Now we're going to move on to allergens and spices. We gave Olivia peanut butter at six months old per her pediatrician's recommendations and we also gave her eggs I think at seven months old. I was personally nervous to give her eggs because my brother had an egg allergy and our hospital is like 30 minutes minutes away. So I actually went to the Target in the town that our hospital is in and fed her a hard boiled egg in Target just in case I needed to get to the hospital very quickly. So that might sound a little bit crazy to some of you guys, but I just wanted to make sure that we could get to a hospital quickly if we needed to. The peanut butter I wasn't as nervous about, but we did the same thing. I gave it to her when we were out and about in the town that the hospital is in. And I recommend doing that if you're a nervous mom, just for your own peace of mind. My advice to you would be to keep children's Benadryl in your house at all times when you're starting your baby on solid foods, just in case they do have a reaction. The child's Benadryl, I think, says ages two and older. So definitely talk to your pediatrician and get the dosage that you would need if your baby is having a reaction. It was just really great for my peace of mind to have Benadryl around just in case. When it comes to spices, we did not give Olivia any spices at all until she was 12 months old, not even on her meat. The one spice that we did give her was cinnamon. I made her some applesauce and I put some cinnamon in it and she ended up getting red all around her face and I thought she was having an allergic reaction. So I took her to the hospital actually and it ended up going away on its own. But I think the cinnamon was just a really strong spice and it burned her mouth. I googled it and my husband googled it and turns out that's just a very common reaction to cinnamon. I don't think she's had it since then so I need to give it to her again. Maybe a little bit smaller of a dosage but yeah, I would recommend sticking to the 12 month mark when it comes to spices and stuff like that. That's what our pediatrician recommended and it worked out great for us. At 12 months, we started introducing all kinds of spices and she loves them all. Also, honey. Do not give your baby honey until after a year of age. It can make them very, very sick. I have to add in here, obviously don't give your baby choking hazards like peanuts, hard candy, popcorn, grapes, anything like that. If you do give them grapes, make sure they're cut up very, very small or puree them. Moving on to liquids, this was something I couldn't find a whole lot of information out there about. We ended up giving Olivia water at six months old, but keep it below two ounces a day. They do not need a lot of water because their bodies are so little still. Plus, Olivia was still nursing a lot at six months old, and she really didn't need the water. It was mainly just for me to start introducing her to a sippy cup. At 12 months old, we introduced cow's milk to Olivia, and she liked it. She drank it, and she didn't have a problem with it at all. But her iron is low, so her pediatrician actually recommended for me to stop giving her cow's milk because cow's milk can deplete iron in the body. So we give her almond milk or ripple milk now. Ripple milk is a pea-based milk and it has a lot of protein in it. So if she's not eating a lot that day, I will opt for the pea protein milk. Olivia's never had any juice at all and she will be 17 months old this month. We just have never gave her juice, mainly because I don't want her to get used to the sugar. She is totally fine with almond milk and water at this point, so I don't want to throw in juice and make her want that sugar all the time. That is pretty much everything I wanted to cover in this video, and I just have to say, don't stress yourself out when it comes to feeding your baby food. I stressed myself out way too much when it came to the whole situation, and I was very nervous and constantly worried she was going to have some sort of reaction to something. I'm just a very nervous person, so that's... That's how it went for me. But with my next baby having this knowledge, hopefully I will be a lot more calm. I just felt really lost and I felt like I didn't have any direction when it came to feeding her foods, what foods I should feed her, when she, I should start giving her water and milk and all of that stuff. Pediatricians don't really give you a whole lot of information about that stuff. You're kind of left to your own direction when it comes to that. And I felt really lost. And also, don't stress out if your baby's not eating three meals a day in the beginning. Olivia definitely did not eat three meals a day for a long time. She would just eat a little bit of purees here and there in the beginning. She nursed a ton. And so I knew that she was getting the nutrients that she needed by nursing, but I knew at the one year mark, she needed to be eating three meals a day. So around 11 months is when I started trying to incorporate more and more meals. And she just kind of did it on her own. It just kind of progressed naturally. So just cut yourself some slack, calm down about the whole situation 
situation. Be relaxed about it. Remember, food before one is just for fun and have fun watching your baby experience new textures and tastes and all of that stuff because it really is fun. And if you stress yourself out about it, you're definitely going to take the joy out of the whole situation. So stay calm and enjoy it. That season passed so quickly for us, it seems. Now Olivia is just eating everything. So soak it all up and enjoy it. Leave any of your tips and tricks or your recommendations down below in the comments. I always love hearing y'all's experiences and what you guys did when it came to different situations. We all have a different view on things, so I love reading all of y'all's comments down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe down below to my channel. I would love to have you guys join my community here. I do mostly motherhood and lifestyle content, and I vlog regularly. So subscribe, like this video, and I will see you guys soon in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.